So this particular exhibition is one of three exhibitions that we're running right now um, in celebration of the gallery's one year anniversary. This particular exhibition is titled Beacon um, and it's something that's very close to my heart because it is one of our first exhibitions we've done in support of a foundation. So the proceeds from Beacon help support the Children, Children Living with Cancer Foundation that's in Nigeria. Um, most of the artworks were made by children who are either living with cancer, who have survived cancer, or children who donate their time and their artwork towards the cause of supporting children who live with cancer. So it's quite um, an impactful cause for the Beacon exhibition, but I also think um, while the subject is quite serious, the exhibition itself is quite joyful, it's full of vibrant colors, um, and really beautiful poignant artwork by children. So typically, um, you know, when people hear about the Children's Art Gallery, before they come into the door, they already have an impression of what it's going to look like. People typically think it's going to be maybe some doodles or scribbles on paper, um, but we process and exhibit all types of artwork, 2D art, 3D, abstract, hyperrealism, impressionism. Um, what we've discovered is the art that children make is very typical of what adult artists make as well. So we even have children who make conceptual art itself. Um, and I think there's a lot of adult artists who actually get their inspiration from the way that children create as well. So typically when people come in the door, they're very surprised by what they see. These artworks were made in August at the Lute Ward with children battling cancer. So we had survivors come around, other kids come around and they made these artworks as we do every year to create awareness and support because we create the support through the sales of these artworks and when we sell them it goes to the foundation, the Children Live with Cancer Foundation. I'm actually um, the founder of Finnish Talent Studio and um, in 2016 I started the exhibition and that was when somebody introduced me to childhood cancer like they told me there are children battling cancer and I'm like in this country and they took me to the world I saw it with my eyes I walked with them and it was very emotional for me and then I dedicated the uh, exhibition then to children battling cancer and subsequently I decided to partner with Children with Cancer Foundation and it's been successful so far because I know that every year we we'll always get at least one or two persons that would always discover that, oh, there are children that have cancer. Oh, these are the things we can note out, uh, we can check to know that this child has the sign or symptom of childhood cancer. And right now in Nigeria, uh, about 90% of the kids die, which is as a result of lack of finance, superstitious beliefs, and then so I would call it denial because most parents don't want to believe their children have cancer. They would say, my child is not in my family or something. But it's not genetic actually. It's not genetic unfortunately. And by the time they bring these kids to the world, it's too late. We've had cases where people say, oh, they use the child for rituals. Or, oh, this child is cursed. And the parents are even scared to speak out because they say in their church they might put them aside or talk about them, you know, people start talking, oh, this person that has to try that. So everybody's scared, most of the parents are scared to speak out. So we try to do this so that we let other people know because you can save a child. And we've had cases of even children saving other children just by noting that, ah, there's something wrong with your eyes, it's not normal. And then they go for test and realize the child is already having like a small tumor in the eyes, we've had that case. So the reason why we do this is to create more awareness and um, support, basically. The Thrill of It, a premiere of TCAG's Doodle series, collaborative art made by children who donate their creativity to afford other children art supplies and art programs, presented to an international audience from 20 countries around the world. Nurture Nature, the healing power of color, which gives children the platform to present visual stories about creating awareness about climate change, being a steward of our local environment, and building a culture of care for people, nature, and ecosystems. And Beacon, which calls to summon hope from the support of children and their families affected by cancer. The selected works are made by children living with cancer, 
childhood cancer survivors donated pieces made by children as well as group pieces made in workshops at Luth. Majorly by Esther. She's an impatient. She wants to become an artist in the future. And she did most of this painting, but she was assisted by Ifunaya, another impatient, and um, James, a childhood cancer survivor. So we have the, every month, at the end of the month, we have celebrations for them at the world to celebrate those that were born that month. And so we have survivors come around, we have other kids and families come to celebrate with them. And so they do things to make artworks. And this works. This was made by, fortunately, um, Esther was, um, she was declared free the last day of the workshop so she can go. Unlike the other girls, like Ifunaya, for example, she is in critical condition right now. She was out when we did this, she was all around, she was still strong, but now she's in critical condition. We have Ramat. I remember when we were doing this work, this is one of my interesting stories because we were walking outside the world and she was inside the world, she's just four. And every five minutes she would do, and I'm like, Ramat, we can't come inside. And then she would stay. The next five minutes, she's just trying to call her attention that I'm here, you can't leave me out of this. And I had to seek permission from one of the nurses that, okay, let's go inside to work with her. And she was so excited and she made this piece. And this piece was started by a child, but the parents, the parent wants to stay private. So it was finished by another child. So there were two that made it base, made, majorly. And um, in this corner, we have lots of kids we've lost, but these are some of the kids we've lost to childhood cancer. These are the ones who, who could get their pictures. And I've been privileged to work with some of them in person. Like I know oh, this group, I worked with them. I work with this group. We know about Sheung's story. She died from leukemia. Her story is a very emotional one, which I don't think I want to go into details. So uh, this is their corner, and then we wrote a poem for them because they fought till the end. They were very strong. You see, when you hear their stories, the way they were during treatment, they were so happy, friendly. They would play with you, even some of them, till the last minute. They're still very positive. They will tell you, oh, mommy, please don't do this, don't do that, don't think, don't worry, everything will be all right, you know? You can imagine children can't phantom the, the, the idea behind dying, you know? Death is not something that it's for them, it's, but here we are. And we hope that more Nigerians will support this cause because we're looking at having a place where these kids can get treatment for free, their parents can be put in a place because most of these parents, when they come to the hospital, there's no place for them to stay. They will probably sit on the floor and most of them sell their properties, they lose everything and they are frustrated. And childhood cancer goes beyond just the child having the cancer, it affects everyone around them. We've had cases where even the sibling was feeling guilty that he caused the cancer for his brother and they were asking, why would you think that way? He said, eh, because we had a fight, you know siblings fight and they just say, you, something will happen to you, you know those, those fight and then I think weeks later, the brother was diagnosed with cancer and the boy was feeling like, ah, I'm the one that caused the cancer. So it's psychological. And we've had nurses, you know, when these kids die and these doctors will cry and people will tell them, if you're crying this much, what do you want the parents to do? But it's emotional because they are kids. You bond with them when you're working with them. So it's a whole lot. And we're hoping Nigerians will do more by donating because we need to have a place for them, for their families to set them up so that they don't feel frustrated. Because most of them, after the kids leave the world, their life is finished as we know it. No money, nothing to go fall back on and all that. So we're reaching out to Nigerians to come support the foundation, even if it is uh, uh, to pay into the foundation's account every month at the end of the month. Or if you're an artist, a kid artist, donate to the gallery. Tell them you're doing this for the children of the cancer. Or you come out here and buy artworks as well. It will go a long way.